So the bleach drought is finally over and I'm not gonna lie, it's not been an easy one. Almost six months of radio silence from the bleach team until today. We finally have a trailer drop and we've gotta ask, was it worth the wait? In this video, I'll be offering my comprehensive breakdown and analysis of the all new bleach trailer for Core 2, which is going to be airing on the 8th of July, 2023. Now, I am going to be speaking about different aspects of the production team, as well as what has changed since the first core of the anime. And also I'll break down the art and animation that we were shown within the trailer. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video because I'll be talking about every last bit of all new anime exclusive material that was hinted at within this new trailer, including hints of a Soul King flashback, Shinji's Bankai, and a scene involving Tokinada Sunayashiro, which hints at Can't Feel Your Own World possibly being adapted into anime form. With each fans, you definitely don't want to miss out on all of this exciting new info. Shortly after the first cut of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, we had caught on to little bits of information and pieces of news that had strongly suggested a number of things. There was first the announcement by Yoshihiro Kano, the phenomenal animator who gave us the masterpiece that was Yuhobak vs Ichigo and multiple equally great cuts of animation throughout Core 1. He had announced that he was vacating the position of action and effects animation director. This was heavy news to digest because he was an essential part of why the fight animation in Core 1 was so great. Though he did say that he was going to keep supporting the broadcast, it is yet to be confirmed if this was as a viewer or as a participating animator. Now this sad turn of events was soon followed by the amazing news that the legendary effects animator Takashi Hashimoto was also slightly involved in the first core, and he will be playing a much bigger role in Core 2, taking up the position of action and effects animation director, basically acting as Kano's replacement. Or maybe not, because there have been some leaks to suggest that Takashi Hashimoto is an addition to the team and not Kano's replacement, but we can rest assured knowing that the replacement for Kano is someone of the same level of talent, so that's reassuring to hear. Now I've been saving the best info for last, which was a tweet from Masaki Hiramatsu, the script writer for the Bleach anime, where he had addressed a fan's concerns on just how quickly everything went by and his promise for better animation in Core 2. He had even gone on to say that Core 2 was going to be as exciting as a roller coaster. Now don't get it wrong, Core 1's animation at its best was easily top of the line by any standards. But at the same time, it also had some really low points with its animation. So hearing from a staff member that we should expect far more consistently good animation is some amazing news to hear. So when you put all of this together, we're left with what looks like an incredible production team for this core, which in my opinion, the next batch of Bleach episodes definitely needs even more so than Core 1, especially with all of the amazing fights that happen in the second Quincy invasion, which we'll all be able to see in just over a month's time. So moving on to the trailer, we need to ask, was it all that we were expecting? And ultimately, was this trailer for Core 2 worth the wait? After beginning the video with an announcement of some staff changes within the animation team, I believe that it's only fair to continue exploring some of these changes. Surprisingly, action and animation director Young Hoon Jung has been replaced by Azushi Wakabayashi. He is a veteran action animator who has worked on multiple different anime, including titles like Yu Yu Hakusho, Naruto, and numerous other classics. His animation is incredibly fluid and dynamic, and he seems to take a lot of pointers from Norio Matsumoto's flow style of animation. He is also a phenomenal storyboarder who I'm certain can make fantastic storyboards for the fights that Kotu will adapt. He was believed to have retired, but has once again come out of retirement to work on Bleach. It is very interesting to note that this isn't even the first time this has happened. The extremely talented animation director who had storyboarded episode 7 of Core 1, Toshiyuki Suru, was also believed to have retired, but he had also come out of retirement in order to work on Bleach. It's extremely entertaining seeing how talented veteran animators are coming out of retirement just to work on this big property. It's simply amazing stuff. So Azushi Wakabayashi is a more than welcome entry into Bleach's animation staff. Most of the other Bleach staff have remained unchanged. Saori Goda is still in charge of color design, Kazuhiro Yamada is still the director of photography, and Masashi Kudo is still the character designer. Though I'm keeping my fingers crossed that he actually does some animation in the second core. Because despite normally taking the position of character designer, Masashi Kudo is in fact a phenomenal animator. So I hope that he gets to show off a bit more in Core 2. And because I've already talked about Takashi Hashimoto's participation as an action and effects animator, I'd want to round up and start getting into the really fun stuff. Let's speak about the art and animation that we've seen from this all new trailer. Beginning with just the first few shots in the trailer, we can see that 
that the Taguchi aesthetic is still going strong, and while I was initially skeptical of his directorial prowess, Kowon definitely cemented my faith in his abilities, and he continues to raise the bar with his gorgeous compositing and shading here. I have spoken about how Kaw 2 will be placing a specific emphasis on the unique colour ratio for each Sternritter. We see in the trailer a shot of Yuhobak watching the second invasion with different coloured Quincy crosses, with each colour representing a specific Sternritter, like the purple Reishi being Asnod, red being Bambiata, and green being Candice for example. This is again Taguchi and the team utilising visual effects to personalise the Sternritter even further, hopefully making each of them feel more memorable within the anime adaptation. Because I know that a lot of people complained about the Sternritter just not being as impactful as the Espada, and I feel that this is really selling them short. There are truly some incredible characters amongst the Sternritter, and hopefully Kortu shines a spotlight onto them and provides us with some amazing moments involving the Sternritter who take part in several key battles during this next portion of the story. There were also some really nice stylistic choices made during the trailer, like the callback to the Espada during that scene where we see the camera pan out across a long table that the Sternritter are sitting around. Hashward is also made to look really imposing as he is sitting at the head of the table, as he reaches his hand out looking as menacing as ever. Now another visually impressive shot within the trailer was of Ichigo after he completes his training with Ichibe, and we see this multicoloured aura emanating from his body with these amazing particle effects. This showcases that Ichigo has in fact undergone a tremendous transformation which emphasises Ichibe's words that Ichigo has surpassed an ordinary Shinigami. Now these colours also represent the multiple different powers within Ichigo's soul, like the red for his hollow side, golden for his Shinigami side, blue of course for his Quincy side, and finally green which represents his full powers. Now this indeed has some interesting law implications, but I'll dive into that in detail later on. Now when it comes to the topic of CG in anime, it's really rare to find any love for it, and Komomura's Bankai transformation has in fact been done in CG, and there have been some people reacting to it negatively, but I don't really see an issue with it personally. I think that people are so used to seeing bad CG in anime that they automatically assume that any CG in anime is bad, but Komomura's Bankai looks really well done from the shots that we see at least in the trailer, especially this over the shoulder shot where he is about to strike Bambietta which is really impressive when you see all of the compositing, like the detailed background, the smoke clouds, the red reishi emanating from his Bankai, and then of course Bambietta and her red holy form which looks better than what I was expecting. The CG model also fits well into the scene and it doesn't look too jarring which is often the case for most CG models which are placed amongst 2D art. Interestingly enough, this trailer shows off very little animation, and it's the complete opposite to Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2's trailer which showed off a lot of its strong animation from the most anticipated moments from the hidden inventory arc. Bleach on the other hand only shows very short snippets of cuts from low priority episodes. We have cuts like the battle between Hitsugaya vs Kangdu and Baz B, even Soifon vs BG9, and Rose and Kensei vs Mask. Now each of these cuts shows some incredibly dynamic animation for the few seconds that we see them on screen. This is actually in stark contrast to Core One's previews where they had used rather underwhelming animation throughout the previews and had kept all the good stuff for the episodes. But in this case at least, every snippet of animation that is shown in this new trailer seems very strong and dynamic, which in my opinion confirms once again that Core 2 of the anime will have top tier animation, or at the very least much better than Core 1's. Now let's spend some time talking about the music that was showcased during the trailer. It begins with a very somber song playing during the scenes involving Uryu joining Yuhobak and the Sternritter being showcased. The music composer for Bleach, Shiro Sagisu, is the best in the industry, and honestly we are so lucky to have him on board. His work is easily identifiable, and it packs such an emotional punch. It really hits you in the feels listening to that first song in the trailer, which is then used as a prelude which leads up to scenes showcasing the second Quincy invasion. Following Yuhobak declaring that the long drawn out battle between the Shinigami and Quincy will finally come to an end we get to hear a preview of the new opening for Core 2 for the very first time. And wow, it truly does leave an impression on you, with the guitar immediately kicking in, disrupting the somber tone of the previous song and taking us straight into the action. It's a really heavy rock song with a strong drum and bass that uplifts the energy of the song to match the on-screen visuals. Of course, this is just a preview of the opening and it's the first time that we are actually listening to it, so I am fairly confident that this is a song that's going to grow on all of us over the course of three months 
while Kotu the anime is airing. The main part of the vocals kick in right after Shinji says Bankai. And yeah, what more is there to say? It sounds really good. I don't think it really stands out all that much from what we have heard so far, but I'm definitely looking forward to hearing the full opening when it drops. We learnt in the weeks leading up to the new Kotu trailer that Tatsuya Kitani, who had sang the opening for Core 1, would be doing the opening for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Now this was our first indication that he would not be returning for the Bleach Core 2 opening. Sure enough, during this trailer we had the reveal of the new Core 2 opening song, which is a song titled Stars and it's sang by the band WOD. Much to all of our surprise, the trailer showcases a lot of anime exclusive content. The first anime exclusive scene that I want to talk about is the shocking reveal of Shinji's Bankai. He literally says Bankai in the trailer, and we know all about his Bankai from the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels. So it was really fitting to see him at long last use it during Bleach's final arc. We know that in the manga we didn't get to see much of Shinji. He was basically off screened by Bambietta and he had remained out of the action for the remainder of the arc. However, the Kotu anime hints at Shinji single handedly battling against 20 plus Sternritter. During the fight, he will be revealing his Bankai for the very first time in animated form. We know that his Bankai has an ability that turns friends into foes. And I do have a new video in my Bankai Explained series coming up where I will break down Shinji's broken Bankai ability. So be sure to look forward to that as I'll be uploading it in the weeks leading up to the airing of Core 2. Now, what I find the most interesting about this Bankai reveal is that it isn't actually the new fight. Because Kubo had talked specifically about a fight between two characters in a specific place, which leads to my next point. I believe that there's a whole lot pointing to the fact that Ichigo will have to fight Uryu in Core 2. Now, this is because the trailer seems to focus quite heavily on that fact. The first preview, which was released after the broadcast of Core 1, had featured some brand new lines from Uryu swearing on his Quincy pride that he was going to kill someone. And now, in this trailer, we have Ichigo contemplating the fact that a war between the Shinigami and Quincy would imply that he and Uryu were now enemies, and as such, they would most likely have to fight each other. These hints have been so incredibly subtle that we might have completely overlooked their implications. Now, this will be cemented perfectly in what I think will be the final trailer during the pre-screening on June 25th. As far as I know, I think that Ichigo vs Uryu is as good as confirmed. Now, I did see several scenes in the trailer which teased Ichigo's training with Ichibei, which for the most part was off-screen in the manga. There is a shot where we see Ichigo from behind standing in this dark room as he is in front of what appears to be a shrine. This is then followed by that new shot of Ichigo and the multicolored aura that is surrounding him. Following the anime exclusive look into Ichigo's training, we get in rapid succession four screenshots that are in relation to the Soul King. The trailer makes it out as though these stills originate from memories that are laying dormant within Ichigo's Ryatsu. The images briefly show us glimpses of a flashback involving the Soul King. We see his dismembered body with shots of its torso, along with a severed arm on the ground. Then lastly, we are shown a shot of the Soul King who is encased within the crystallized structure in the Royal Palace. These visions have massive implications for Bleach's law, and maybe even Ichigo's character, because Ichigo was for the most part oblivious to the darker truth behind the Soul King's existence. Him finding this out alone implies that Ichigo might come to know the full truth of the world within the anime. The possibilities truly are endless for where the anime is going to be taking the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Towards the end of the trailer, we were also shown some scenes hinting at a figure who looks a lot like Tokinada Sunayashiro. Now, if you don't know, this is the main villain from the Bleach Can't Fear on World light novels, which actually take place after the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Tokinada wields a Zanpakuto called Iko Mikidomo. It is a blade that has an ancient Adhucha's class hollow sealed within it. It is an extremely powerful Zanpakuto that Tokinada had given to Hikone during the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels. We know that at some point he steals this from Nimaya, presumably after Ichigo's Reatsu evaporates Nimaya's well of water while Ichigo's new Zanpakuto is being reforged. This trailer literally shows Tokinada holding a Zanpakuto, which is major setup for Can't Fear Your Own World. This is literally the biggest proof that you need that the Bleach anime may continue to adapt to the light novel content after Core 4 of the anime. I mean, why else would they include this scene in Core 2, let alone in the trailer for the new season? On Kubo's official fan club, he was asked about anime adaptations for the Bleach light novels. In question 287, he was asked if after the Thousand Year Blood War arc, we can expect to get animated material for the novels like We Do Not Always Love You, which focuses on Rukia and Renji's wedding, as well as showcasing scenes that progress the relationship between Ichigo and Orihime. Kubo did in fact 
Jack respond that the light novels could be adapted into anime if there was enough material for them. Now following these exclusive teasers in the new trailer, it confirms that the anime staff are intending to adapt Can't Feel Your Own World at the very minimum. I do hope that we get to see the other light novels like Spirits of Forever With You at least adapted into an OVA or a movie, but I do think that Can't Feel Your Own World has enough material to be adapted into at least a 12 episode anime core, which would just be a dream come true if they had decided to do this after Core 4. Following Jump Faster last year, we knew that Kubo was staying up late at night doing script rewrites for Core 2 of Bleach. He was making changes to the dialogue, including a new fight scene that had spanned several pages in length. As I've said earlier, this fight scene isn't going to be including Shinji's Bankai, so it's a totally different fight. And in addition to this, Kubo the Mad Lad may have added a complete sulking flashback into Core 2, as well as scenes foreshadowing Tokinada preparing for a Can't Feel On World anime adaptation. These are all things that we have to look forward to and to look out for during the airing of Core 2 of Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. There you have it, this was my complete breakdown and analysis of the all new Bleach trailer. I have tried my best to dissect all of the important details for the new trailer, including behind the scenes staff changes like the addition of the legendary animator Azushi Wakabayashi and the increased role of Takashi Hashimoto. Also, who can forget the incredible role that animation director Taguchi is playing as he elevates Bleach to new heights thanks to his unique visual aesthetic. Of course, we had the reveal of a new opening song as well as anime exclusive scenes which were teased within the trailer, which hint at a Can't Feel Your Own World anime adaptation. It really has been a long six months since the airing of Car 1 of Bleach, but the wait seems to have been worth it. We can see the improved animation quality, the incredible music, combined with hints of anime-only scenes. This is all proof that we really are in the best timeline for Bleach content. So as we delve into the second invasion of the Quincy, let me know all of your thoughts on everything that we have seen so far from Car 2. Mark your calendars for the 8th of July 2023 because I'll be back with regular episode reviews and complete manga vs anime comparisons that you do not want to miss. Be sure to continue the discussion about this trailer in the comments and subscribe to the channel for new Bleach content which I'll be posting building up to the hype of Core 2 airing. I'm currently scripting a really long Hashward character analysis which hopefully will come before July, so definitely stick around for that. Now lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.